The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good morning church i hope you're having a blessed day today we are jumping into revelation chapter 18 in revelation chapter 17 and revelation chapter 18 is the fourth parenthetical and, and what we mean by a parenthetical is it's an angelic explanation it's a parenthesis it's where the angel puts the storyline on pause and says hey john I know you just saw the gravity and the severity of a chronological section or the end time events unfold. But now that you've seen the end time events unfold, what I want to do is I want to show you why these things are happening. And the parentheses are not just why the events are happening, but it's also truths, it's promises, it's all of the other information to understand why and what and how and all these kind of different truths that we understand about the book of the Revelation. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be reading Revelation chapter 18. Now Revelation chapter 17 is what we looked at yesterday and Revelation chapter 17 was powerful because it is the start of the explanation of the harlot Babylon. And we want to be people of understanding on the harlot. Now, I've talked about the harlot Babylon in five, six, seven, I don't know, a bunch of sermons. It's a part of our end times curriculum part one. It's a part of our end times curriculum part two. We have Sunday services on it. I mean, obviously we're doing daily teachings on it. We have so much information on the harlot. And in a short 30 minute lesson, we're not going even close into the details of the harlot. I mean, I'm, I'm barely glancing over some of these truths. And really what I want to do when we talk about 17 and 18, yesterday and today, is I want to stress the importance of the gravity of the seduction and the deception of the harlot. And yesterday we really spent the entire lesson going through that by the understanding that if John would wonder with great admiration at the harlot, how much more should we prepare ourselves to not be seduced? I mean, we don't want to be you know, well, I won't be seduced. Don't take that position in your heart. We want to be people that we really take time to uh, to prepare ourselves to not be seduced. I mean, I, I, that's probably the best way I can say it. So we talked yesterday about the, the level of seduction and deception of the harlot and the harlot being a religious system advanced by the Antichrist to pollute and corrupt the morals of people so that when the Antichrist comes on the stage and commits the abomination of desolation, the process of going from the harlot unto the Antichrist is an easy step. It's too great of a step to go from half-hearted in any religion into full-out demon worship of the Antichrist, but it is an easy move from, I don't really worship anything, I've polluted all of my morals, I've corrupted all of myself, then just to, okay, it's just one more step, no big deal. And that's a lot of the position many, many people will take. So that's why we want to be people that are prepared. And we want to understand that through the vile judgments of God at the seventh vial, Babylon comes into remembrance. And it's, and it's that great judgment of the great whore. So what we're going to do today is we're going to pray. And then we're just going to take some time and just very briefly overview Revelation chapter 18. I'll say it over and over. Continue to get in our other curriculums and follow along with us in those areas if you would like more information on this. But Father, I thank you. 
I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion, transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll go with me to Revelation chapter 18. Let's go ahead and just read through the passage. It's a little bit longer of a chapter than the other ones, but let's go ahead and read through all of it. And then we will take some time to really just overview some of the aspects of not only the economic side of Babylon, but also the fact that Babylon is a great city. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, fill her to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived delicately, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the lord god who judgeth her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live delicately with her shall bewail her and lament for her and when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all nine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusteth after are departed from thee and all thine things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off, and cried, when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. No craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. 
Now the harlot Babylon, we've already said it before, but I'm going to say it again, is both a religious and it is an economic and actual physical city of Babylon. Now, what we see, a, a, a lot of Bible scholars teach this in two different ways. I would agree that it's, it's, it's a twofold level of destruction of the city of Babylon. One is the religious side of Babylon is destroyed by the burning of the Ten Kings. The Ten Kings burn the harlot when the Antichrist is through with her. You know, the harlot rides upon the beast meaning the Antichrist will advance the harlot Babylon religion. And, the, and obviously the harlot Babylon religion is only advanced by the Antichrist to pollute, to corrupt the morals of the people, to pull them further and further away from God. That's the point, so that taking the step into outright Antichrist worship will be an easy step. That's the point. So when the Antichrist says, I'm on the scene, you worship me or die, they burn the harlot and give over the power unto the Antichrist. So they see that as a twofold judgment. I mean, the first judgment of the harlot Babylon occurs in the way in which the Antichrist destroys the religious side of the harlot. Now, the second way in which the harlot is destroyed is through the judgments of God, and that's the city of Babylon. Now, if you read the entire human history and human time period on the earth if you read the, the whole uh history of man is really the story and the tale of two cities the city of the great king which is jerusalem the nation of israel and it's the city of babylon now one thing we didn't talk about yesterday but we will understand is that babylon has its roots in the tower of babel now, we didn't go into that fully in detail yesterday, but I want to give two main aspects on the gravity of why that's so important. If you go back into Genesis chapter 11 and you study the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel has two main understandings that I want you to take away from it. One is that the people say, I will make my own way to heaven outside of the will of God. That's the religious side of the harlot. It's that deception that I can make my own way in and of my own self. I decide what's best for me when it comes to the religious side outside of the will of God. That's number one. The second aspect that I want you to understand about the Tower of Babel is that when man comes together, the collective knowledge of man brings forth ungodliness. God said, I will split the land because if they continue to be together and continue in this way, they will go all the way in sin. And God said, I can't let that happen yet. And he split the language at the Tower of Babel. Now, the reason why I say that this is so important is because when the harlot Babylon is on the scene, not only in a religious aspect, but also in the economic aspect of Babylon it says that all of the kings of the earth participate with the harlot this harlot Babylon religion will bring the culmination of goods and financial trade in a way in which has never before been seen but that will also be a area in which ungodliness and sin will go to the deepest level and these are the roots and it's the deceptions that were encompassed in the Tower of Babel. That's what I want you to catch hold of when we talk about this. And we don't have time to go into all of this in great detail. But I want you to see that an angel says that Babylon is fallen. And over and over throughout the book of the Revelation and in the end time narrative in general... The culmination is Babylon is destroyed. That is what is going to happen at the end. Now, Babylon is a great city. It's the great city of Babylon. And the reason why I want you to understand that is because what it will look like on the outside and the reason why it's so seductive and so deceptive is that because of the money and the trade, the kings are participating, the merchants, all of these things are happening. It's going to look like Babylon is invincible, like it can never be destroyed. I mean, it's going to come up out of nowhere 
and it's going to come into such prominence and prominence and economic blessing and political aspects and participate with all of the people of the world there's people are gonna say there's no way babylon can be destroyed but in one day and in one hour babylon will be utterly destroyed forever that's why god tells his people you are not to participate with the harlot both in the religious and in the economic now this is where we understand that doctrine of balaam who taught balak to cast a stumbling block before the nation of israel this is the same this this end time understanding really throughout the entire bible is that pollution in the physical sense or harlotry in the physical leads to harlotry in the spirit it's what happened inside of hosea when hosea prophesied about it it is the narrative of the entire bible that immorality sexual immorality fornication and adultery in the physical sense sex outside of marriage between one man and one woman under covenant with god that outside of that opens doors for the pollution in the spirit that's why god told moses you kill everybody in the land because their daughters will cause your sons to go a whoring after other gods and that's the doctrine of belong that's exactly what hosea prophesied against when it comes to the nation of israel you're playing the harlot it, both in physical which has opened the door for the spiritual sense but the other way in which they polluted themselves as a harlot hosea prophesied about it and obadiah talked about it calling it the cleft of the rock is the exaltation of pride and the way in which i seek protection and provision from other sources that's the harlot babylon in the natural physical like city babylon the economic side you may say well what does that mean the nation of Israel exalted itself in pride against the God of Israel and said, I will go to Egypt to seek for my protection against the Assyrians instead of turning my heart to the Lord. The way in which the kings of the earth will see the economic side of Babylon is so prosperous and glorious that I will participate with that, yet God calls it a harlot. And when you participate in that, you receive the same plagues of her. The harlot is going to receive double portion, all of the plagues of God. And you participate with her, you will receive the plagues of God. And this will be so seductive because people will say, well, I need to participate with the harlot because look at all the money. Look at all the economics. Look at how great this city is. I'll participate. And God says, if you participate, you also participate of the wrath that will come upon her that's a powerful truth god says you are not supposed to participate with the harlot and this is the question i asked people you know yesterday we talked about the question of the harlot in the religious sense with do we understand the level of seduction and deception to not participate well here's the question i want to ask today do you trust the lord as your source and your protection because that right there is going to be the fundamental question of whether you participate with the actual economic side of the harlot babylon and the city of babylon because the city of babylon is going to have all of the great things of this world gold and silver and decked and all these things it's going to look so i mean right now in 2023 look at dubai the money and the power and all but imagine it times a thousand that's what babylon's going to be like and everybody's going to want to participate and get a portion of that. Yet God says, you're not supposed to participate. I am your source. I am your protection. I am your provision. Do not participate. Here's, here's, here's some of the reasons why this city Babylon moves my heart so much. Because a lot of people, when we talk about the great city of Babylon, talk about the money and the gold and all the things. But the things that I really see when I see the harlot is the fact they got slaves and souls of men. They will be selling people in Babylon. So I, you know, I hear the narrative, peace and justice and goodwill and deliverance, and we're against slavery and we're against, uh, we're against sex trafficking and all of the, and I'm against those things too. I'm against slavery. I'm against sex trafficking. Yet the harlot Babylon is going to be doing exactly that, and the kings of the world are participating with it. I mean. I want you to take a minute and understand that. On the outside, it looks like, oh, that's just a great city, and I'm gonna, 
I'm going to go in there, get my money and make some money and do all these things. Yet behind the scenes, they're selling people. Not only are they selling people, not only are they selling slaves and souls of men, people are giving their souls over in this. It also says that behind the scenes, the blood of the prophets, the blood of the saints, and all that were slain upon the earth were found inside of Babylon. The, thing that's, the things that are happening in Babylon are producing the widespread killing of the people of God and all that were upon the earth. I mean, on the outside, it's such a counterfeit and it's such a deception between gold and, and, and majesty and royalty and all of these things, yet when you pull back the curtain and you go into the back room, they're, they're killing Christians. Oh, you don't agree with this? You're calling us a harlot and they kill you over it. This produces blood guilt in a way like none other over the city of Babylon. When blood is shed all the way back to Cain and Abel, when blood touches the ground, blood cries out to God. That blood cries out from the ground and cries out to the Lord for the vengeance of God to repay for the blood that was just shed. And, and, and we talk about the, the, the blood guilt of Babylon and what Babylon will receive. What does America have right now with the way people are killing babies through abortions and things like that? But Babylon will have it in such a greater level. I mean, Babylon's going to have the blood of the prophets, blood of the saints, blood of the people, all the people on the earth. They're going to be selling people, selling souls of men. It will have so much guilt for all of the evil and iniquity that they did. I had people ask, they say, well, what sin is the worst? And and I don't like to go through this because it's, it's I, one, I'm not about to talk about the, de the degrees of sin or I'm, we're not going to have a conversation on that. All I want to do is talk about this one thing. The reason why murder is so evil in the sight of God, killing of another person, because that person is an eternal soul, because that person has a destiny in eternity, whether with God or away from God, when you murder, you take away that other person's choice. They, The minute you kill that person, they have no choice on their eternity because now they have died. They're, you kill somebody, you seal their eternity. That's why blood must be paid back with blood. And that's why this blood guilt over the city of Babylon is so great. We just saw seven vials get poured out and Babylon's came into remembrance and God destroyed Babylon over it. It's because of that type of severity. It's because of what you've done to people that I will destroy you because of it. It will never be like that again. And there's a lot of things that people say, well, I, I'm participating with this, yet they don't know behind the scenes they're sex trafficking women. They're killing people. They're doing all kinds of ungodliness. And people say, well, I just, I just thought I was making a little bit of money with them, yet they're selling little children behind the scenes. That's the degree at a level never before seen in history that Babylon will be doing. You know, we think of selling people and killing people when it comes to adults. Imagine the fact, and what this will be, is they will also be doing this with children. This is the gravity of how dangerous this harlot is. And we have to be people that are prepared to not participate in it. You know, it's it's like people say, well, I just, I just bought a little something from them. Well, when you put money into it, you are helping advance what they do. That's why God tells you that you are not to participate both in the religious side and the economics because as they grow with money, they grow in evil to do more evil. Now, two last things. And like I said, I'm just I'm just barely going over some of these truths in this passage, just really trying to move your heart in this to study it more is first the understanding that this is the great city Babylon. And I believe that this is going to be in the same geographic location of ancient Babylon. That's I, I believe it's the same geographic location of ancient Babylon. And people say, well, how could that be, Will? They asked the same question for 2,000 years. How could Israel become a nation? How could Jerusalem be a city under the jurisdiction of Israel? And 
How could all that happen? Yet it did. 1949, Israel became a nation. Then they got Jerusalem in their jurisdiction. I mean, like, people never thought that could happen, but in one day they became a nation the same way Babylon's just going to rise up. And there's so many things in the Middle East right now that you can watch videos on that exemplify what this harlot might be like. And they might even be forerunners to the harlot. And I believe the harlot, is, if it's not next, it's coming very soon on the timetable of human history. This is going to arise. And, and I've watched videos from five years ago where people people put these videos up in you know, places like Saudi Arabia and Iraq and Iran and, and different places with the money. And they're like, this new city and peace and justice and this and that and this and that. Like and it and it and it mo it starts to like wonder and awe and move you, yet the harlot is going to do that at a level we I don't even think we've even seen yet. Yet behind the scenes, they're killing Christians, they're selling people. Like this is something you are not to participate in. Yet the thing that I love that it says is that we rejoice in heaven, the apostles and prophets, holy apostles and prophets, because God avenges you on her. Now that's important because at the breaking of the fifth seal, the fifth seal, the martyrs in heaven, in heaven cry out, how long till you avenge and judge? And God says, until the time that the martyrs be fulfilled. And when that culmination comes to its fullness, then the wrath of God and the avengement of God comes forth. You know who the avengement of God is going to be poured out on? Babylon. Babylon is going to receive this avengement where God's wrath will be poured out against them that martyr, and them that them that kill Christians. Like that's this this blood will not go unanswered. You don't have to be worried. God, will you answer? Will you? God says, I will never forget it, and I will avenge it. I will repay it, and I will pay her back double for everything she's ever done. We're gonna stop here for today. I pray that this lesson blessed you very much. It definitely blessed me. And I, I pray it stirred your heart to go into studying this more. Like I said, we have two curriculums and we have hours and hours of teaching on this. So I pray that you go and study it more. But Father, bless these people. I give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. And we will see you tomorrow. The sparrows not worried about tomorrow Oh, the troubles to come the lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Because you take good care of me. You take The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon